<laughs> Welcome back, everybody. I am here solo today. There's no Bennett Tomlin with me, unfortunately. So if you want to tune out and shut this off, I get it. He's a more reasonable voice, but I think it's important for me to jump jump in today, do a podcast on Zhao Dong, who was or is a cryptocurrency exchange founder and OTC desk, over-the-counter desk trader in China. And he just got sentenced to, or he's about to be sentenced to roughly three years in prison, maybe less. This has been a really important story for me. I've been covering it for a really long time. Obviously, there's sources in China itself that could probably figure out more details than I can. But since I've been covering it for such a long period of time, I felt that it was a good time to talk to you guys about it, reminisce over what has happened, talk about the history of Zhao Dong, and reflect on how he ended up in prison. So let's go back in time. The earliest I could find any mention of Zhao Dong and criminal activity is sometime around 2017, when a small newspaper in Belgium referenced the fact that two brothers had been doing these large transaction fees on top of these Bitcoin transactions. It apparently was clear money laundering activity. The two brothers were arrested. There was 90,000 euros in cash on them, and there was 300,000 euros frozen. Apparently, they were doing this business on behalf of Zhao Dong, but of course, Zhao Dong wasn't in Belgium when this arrest took place. So at that point, you have to ask yourself, who is this Zhao Dong guy? Why is he moving money in Belgium? Like, what is happening here? And when you start to look into who Zhao Dong is, you start to see this is a relatively big actor in the cryptocurrency scene in China. Americans, Europeans, even though many of us, myself included, are obsessed with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, uh, I think we don't quite fathom how important the Chinese market is because it is more important than the Uh, American markets and the European markets, arguably. But a lot of the mining goes on there. um, And while institutional investors and all of this are important, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of gambling going on in China. And there's a lot of people betting a lot of money on these cryptocurrencies. Zhao Dong was an important figure in this space. He was an over the counter trader. He uh, they call him Uncle Dong. He was known at least temporarily, as the over-the-counter trader king of China for Bitcoin. So so this guy was an important figure, and he was doing weird, shady deals in Belgium. Within a year of this association with criminal activity in Belgium, Zhao Dong seems to get in very tight with the Bitfinex executives. There's a picture circulating right now online. If you look it up, I'm sure you'll see it. Giancarlo Debussini, the CFO of Bitfinex and Tether, hanging out with Zhao Dong. Kind of an odd, funny picture, but nonetheless, uh, it proves stature, right? This guy has access to some of the more important executives in in this space. And there's reason to believe he had the money, cash flow, power, wealth to back up these, these flexes that he was making. He was often leaving the country. He was traveling abroad. He was making big deals. Um, and he wasn't getting screwed over. He wasn't screwing other people over. So yeah, there was kind of this uh, energy to it that Zhao was the real deal, that he had sway in China, that he knew industry insiders, that he was in tight with important executives. And I'm sure there was truth to that. But he also was incredibly cocky. If you look through his Twitter timeline, if you if you, if you look at his Twitter timeline, you just can tell this man believes in the things he's saying and other people, therefore, believe him as well. If you've listened to the previous episodes of this podcast, then you've probably heard Bennett and I talk about the issues with Crypto Capital Core and how that affected Tether and Bitfinex. If not, that's something to look into. Crypto Capital Core, the fake money services business in Panama, was handed over $850 million of company and client funds by Bitfinex without a contract. Those funds were frozen by multiple governments. Afterward, Tether and Bitfinex haven't been able to retrieve those funds yet. Once this was announced, and it was announced because they admitted that the Tether token was not 100% backed due to this loan, Zhao Dong became the one in May of 2019 to announce what um, Bitfinex and Tether called Unised Leo. So this token still exists. You can find it around. 
it was their token to alleviate their debt. You could become not shareholders, not equity holders, really, but this co token was sort of designed to represent that kind of, I don't know, the terms of service are muddled. The point being here that Zhao Dong was the one who announced this, aggrandized it, and got other key players involved. So soon after he did that, people like Arthur Hayes and others said that they were into this idea and wanted to help support the community. And they raised the money they needed to raise. I think they were trying to raise a billion dollars. They, they, they claimed they raised that amount of money within 10 minutes. So their key supporter was Zhao Dong. It emerged around this time that Zhao Dong was a shareholder of some percentage in Bitfinex and Tether, uh, likely the parent company, Digfinex. And so that would be the reason that he would be so apt to save them. Anyway, to my shock, and I think to other skeptics' shock, like Bennett, but to my, to my shock, the cryptocurrency community didn't really care that Tether wasn't 100% backed. They didn't care that it was 74% uh, backed. And this fundraiser worked so effectively that really uh, none, of these, none of these people, Arthur Hayes, Zhao Dong, and many others included in that, uh, didn't fear, show any fear. They weren't worried, it didn't seem, at least on the exterior surface, didn't seem to be worried about this at all. So much so, in fact, that not within a few months, Zhao Dong starts Tether Yuan. So Tether Yuan is Tether's Yuan derivative, but it isn't, there's two kinds of Yuan. It gets a little weird for people who aren't super familiar with currencies in general, but um, there's the mainland yuan, which is valued a certain way and articulated a certain way by the CCP. And then there's outsider yuan. So there's a yuan for people who aren't on the mainland. And, and those yuan are valued differently. And so this tether yuan derivative used those outside yuan. It also was being held at a Belgium bank. In the end, not very many of these tether yuan were minted. It started in 2019. In 2019, it got to its max amount, which was 23 million yuan, and that was it. Nothing ever happened with it. And after that, Zhao kind of got quiet in 2020. He wasn't so boisterous. He wasn't so cocky. He wasn't so loud. But Zhao Dong didn't have very long to be quiet because soon enough, the rumor mill in China started to whirl. The rumor that hit hardest was that Zhao Dong had taken a flight from Japan, landed in China, and upon hitting the tarmac, was almost immediately arrested. The response to this rumor from exec other executives at his co company called Renrenbit was to deny this claim. They said, this just isn't true. He's briefly being detained. Or they, I, they, I don't even think they used the word detained at first. They said something along the lines of, he's fully cooperating with authorities. But then no one heard from Zhao in a week. And a week became two weeks. And two weeks became three weeks. And then that became months. And then no one was talking about Zhao Dong anymore. But I still wanted to know. I still wanted to know what was going on, even though all seemingly all of his millionaire besties had left him in the dust. They didn't care anymore. They didn't want to talk about him. They didn't want to say anything about him. When I would go into the Run Run Bit Telegram, they also were trying not to talk about it in any public fashion. They were saying they were unaffected by anything that was going on with him. They also wouldn't say what was going on with him. No one knew what had happened to Zhao Dong, but at some point, everyone kind of resigned to the fact that clearly he had been arrested, detained, whatever you want to call it. And that finally brings us to where we are today. So after almost a year in prison or in jail without anyone knowing what was going on with Zhao Dong, he was tried with 11 other defendants over a day. Uh, and was found guilty, guilty of essentially money laundering and some other some other offenses, uh, working with a criminal network. Uh, he was g moving money through casinos to launder it. The estimates to the amount that he laundered are roughly $500 million, 3 billion UN. That's a lot of money. I honestly was worried about whether he would... Uh, China tends to have incredibly harsh sentences for white-collar criminals, so the fact that the likely sentencing for Zhao Dong is going to be three years or less in prison is great. I'm glad that that is the outcome. I'm glad that uh, he got caught doing something that he shouldn't have been doing because 
there are a lot of people involved in cryptocurrency who think you can just do whatever you want. Obviously, China is a lot harsher than America is. So if you're out there, be cautious and be careful if you're involved in cryptocurrency. I think that more or less covers this story, despite the fact that this has taken over four, four years or so to kind of transpire, and I've been following it for a very long time. It only has taken me 10 minutes or so to kind of discuss a very clean summary of it, hopefully. If you want to dig into this a little deeper, I've written some articles about it. You can find them. Uh, Zhao Dong, The Final Word, Another Use Case Bites the Dust, Why Zhao Dong is Still Important. Those are all my Medium articles. They're up. Uh, Protoss did a really good article today on it. So you, you can find some information out there about this if you want to find out more. Hopefully this gave you some insight. And Bennett and I are planning on doing more of these sometime in the near future. Uh, I know Crypto Capital Core is one of the topics we want to discuss. Uh, there's probably several more that it would just be fun for us to be able to discuss and share with you guys. I'm hoping we can keep those down in length to 10, 20 minutes, something like that. Just kind of short little discussions for you guys to listen to occasionally. So try to keep us to our word on that. And I look forward to talking to you guys again soon.